Welcome everybody to the quarterfinals match of the Fragbite Thoroken Qualifier number 6. I'm Bbon from Dota.com, which is I'm Bbon773 on Twitch, Bbon773 on YouTube. And with me, I have myself, because I'm here by myself. But apparently we have a pretty good match between Zero, the German superstars, versus AON on the side of the Dire, and that is apparently the real Hannah Montana. As far as I can tell. Check the profile, check the Steam, and I guess that's real. Hannah Montana and Aeon actually beat Next Kazakhstan, which I thought for sure would have made it through to the quarterfinals to face Zero. Zero, of course, looking very, very strong in all other matches thus far, using very, very, you know, pretty stable picks. Shadow Shaman, Magnus, uh, Bounty Hunter, when they can get their hands on him, usually is a first pick for them. Pretty much has been a first pick for them in every single game. Uh, they've also been making do with Keeper of the Light and being played by Kuroki on support. So we'll see how Aeon decides to approach this matchup. As we have Kuroki, Feta, Armen, Black, and Pass on the side of the Radiant. Meanwhile, I think Aeon, they're all using pretty much their standard name tags as far as I can tell. I think Tibba is uh, somebody else, but I'm not too sure. Oh, I have to set a delay on my stream, so I'll be right back, guys, on the stream. Activate delay. All right. Set the delay. And we have April O'Neil Esports versus Zero. April O'Neil, isn't she from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? I'm not too sure. But against Team Zero, they decide to ban out the Undying the first ban. Uh, usually they've been banning out the Rubik and the Wisp with their first couple of bans. Uh, meanwhile, TA is going to be the ban by T Zero. So we'll see if April O'Neil Esports decides to ban out the Batrider. They do ban out the Batrider. And immediately Zero picks up the Bounty Hunter, which they love to do so often. Meanwhile... What will April O'Neil Esports decide to pick up? Will they pick up the Darkseer, who Team Zero has pretty much been demolishing throughout this entire tournament? Um, that could definitely be a possibility right about now. Uh, a couple strong heroes are still left in the pool. Mm, pretty much all the standard first picks and first bans are out of the way. Rubik is still in the pool. We could see AON pick up that team, I suppose. They pick up Twinhead Dragon, Jakiro, and Darkseer. So pretty standard picks by Aeon thus far. Makes a bunch of sense. Jakiro, probably the best support hero in the game at the moment, and looks like a Zero immediately responding with a Rubik and a Sven counter pick. Black, of course, gonna be handling that Sven. We'll see if uh, Aeon can do as well as the other team that I just casted against Team Zero. I'm not too sure. I actually just completely forgot who Zero just played. They played against Pain, the Brazilian team. And Payne did an offensive try and up against Sven because, you know, it did a really good job in terms of shutting down Sven. But unfortunately, Bounty Hunter and the Templar Assassin just got really, really farmed. Or the Bounty Hunter and the Magnus got really, really farmed. And actually, uh, Zero love using that Magnus, so a little bit surprising we're not seeing Magnus in this game. We're in fact going to see the Rubik most likely in the soul mid capacity. As Aeon going to wait a little while. Will they pick up, will they pick up their mid solo here right about now? They have their support for the trial lane. And they have their Darkseer for the offlane. So right now, um, they're going to start solidifying the roles, but probably going to pick up mid soul so that Zero cannot ban them out. And they're going to pick up Lone Druid. Could be farming in the safe lane, could also be farming in the middle lane. He can do pretty much wherever he wants he can farm. But most likely will probably be in the safe lane with something like a support. And then they're probably going to run a, you know... Competent mid solo hero with the Roamer to help him out from time to time up against the Rubik. 
Meanwhile, Zero going to start banning out supports. They ban out Keeper of the Light. They've been making great usage of Keeper of the Light throughout the tournament thus far in two of their matches. But they've banned him in the other two matches. Really don't want to have Ale and pick up Keeper of the Light if they're not going to pick it up themselves. Meanwhile, Magnus is going to be the response ban by AON. Maybe they know that Team Zero loves playing that Magnetar. Maybe they just don't really want to face it in this situation. Rubik could, if Magnus was still in the game, could support Sven in the offlane and have Magnus ultimate, but that's not going to be a problem in this game because he has been banned. Meanwhile, Enigma is going to be banned by Team Zero. Kuroko played a pretty solid Enigma last game, so a bit puzzling. Zero banning out heroes that they like to use. So I guess they don't want to remain predictable. They want to vary up their strategies, show that they're more versatile, but, you know, yeah. if it works, why fix it? Don't fix what ain't broke. Queen of the Pain is going to be the counter ban as AON is starting to ban on mid solo, so they probably suspect Rubik is going to be a support capacity. Meanwhile, Zero bans out the Venomancer, another support, probably the best support for Lone Druid to lane with. Venomancer so good at harassing with that Venomous scale. Really helps Lone Druid secure the lane, and AON bans out probably one of the strongest ganking mid solos in the game in the form of the Night Stalker. Night Stalker in conjunction with Bounty Hunter is such a deadly combination, definitely cannot be underestimated. As we're going to wait what Team Zero decides to do, what will they actually use the Rubik? Will they use it in the mid solo position? Will they use it as a support as Aeon seems to think he will be because they ban out three mid solos? Uh, Team Zero going to pick up the Tide Hunter, so Tide Hunter will be a support in the tri lane most likely. They're going to need some range, otherwise the Darkseer will pretty much be able to stand up at will up against this potential tri lane because they do have two melees, so maybe they're going to pick up Shadow Shaman for their last hero. But uh, Team Zero likes to use their experience advantage to the advantage, not really using conventional tri lanes. They like to put a jungler or put a roamer to help out their mid soul and then just uh, get a lot of experience on their dual lane on the bottom lane when they are on the Radiant. But that might be a different situation. It really depends on their last pick before you really know for sure what the lanes are. All we know is Tide Hunter will be laning with Sven. Bounty Hunter will be in the off lane at the moment. Meanwhile, Aeon taking a decent amount of time before picking up their own fourth hero. Laundry could be in the mid soul. He's a competent mid soul, not the best mid soul. Doesn't use runes, but of course you can just send the bear to scout out the runes whenever you want. But uh, he can control the lane against anybody pretty well. Except maybe like a bat rider. So Aeon may deciding what we're gonna do for our lanes right about now. Really trying to set it up. And also they want some synergy with that Dark Seer. Maybe they're gonna pick up a carry like the Nio Siren who really benefits from that vacuum. Dark Seer pretty much synergizes well with anybody. Pop the Ion Shell on the bear. You can just run it in in conjunction with the Radiant Stanch that Bear loves to get eventually later on. And Aeon's gonna pick up the Visage. So Aeon's definitely going to run a tri lane because Visage probably the best or one of the best tri lane heroes with that soul assumption doing ridiculous damage. The familiars of course with that stun and the huge amounts of damage that I can put out. Unfortunately the familiars are quite squishy but since there's not too much range as long as you fly the familiars over the cliffs they should be okay. Only Rubik is the range hero on the side of zero so those familiars shouldn't be in too much trouble at least in terms of dying. But I expect zero to fully pick up a range hero right now to help solidify their tri lane or help solidify their safe lane and try to pick off those familiars. If they go for a melee hero, I'll be extremely surprised because they already have three melee. And it's already going to be awkward enough laying them. So, yeah, what's Zero going to pick up? I'm really not too sure. I think Shadow Shaman. They've been using very, very effectively thus far, even though RMN did feed with him in one of the games. He still served his role quite well. They won the game. That's all that matters. So Shadow Shaman sees me, seems to me that it makes the most sense right about now. But that really just depends on how Zero want to play it. Will they remain unpredictable? They have been predictable in picking the Bounty Hunter with their first pick in every single game. But other than that, you know, these are pretty unstandard picks. They haven't picked each of these heroes more than once thus far. They're really taking a lot of time. Will they go something unorthodox? Maybe something like a lion here would be pretty cool to get that finger of death 40 second cooldown level 16. But the problem is, you know, lion does need a lot of experience in order to get to level 16, where 
That's where he suffers. Well, they pick in response to the Visage pick. May get something a little bit more tanky, but the tanky support hero already out of the picture in the form of Jakiro. So, yeah, gonna be pretty, pretty awkward to see how this shapes up. They pick up Enchantress, so they're gonna get a jungle. So we are gonna see a Rubik mid lane, Tidehunter Sven bot lane, and a Bounty Hunter off lane. They really want to get their experience going, because you know when you're a Tidehunter so often, we see Tidehunter in try lane be level 3 or level 4 10 minutes in the game and really not taking full potential of that Ravage. At least this way, if he doesn't get the best farm on the bottom lane, they know that he'll get level 6 relatively soon if he's not in too much trouble. Ten seconds remaining. But how will AON respond to this? Right now they have two of their laning heroes potentially. Are they going to pick up their midsole? They're going to pick up Gyrocopter. So I imagine it's going to be a Lone Druid solo mid, Jakiro, Gyro, Visage, Tri-Lane up top, and a Dark Seer off lane. That's how I, I must suspect it, but... I don't know, it seems weird. Because Jakiro, Visage, Gyro, not the best pushing Tri-Lane against Bounty Hunter. Definitely can kill Bounty Hunter, so if Bounty Hunter ever makes a step in the wrong direction, Bounty Hunter will most assuredly take the fall. As the player is going to pick and choose their teams, I'm going to do some quick adjustments. Alright, hopefully you can fully see the mini-map now. But, we'll get back into this game. So, on the side of Zero, we have Kuroki playing the Enchantress once again. Kuroki, known in Dota 1 for his carry slash semi-carry slash midsole position, pretty much has transitioned to playing his support role since he is the captain. Meanwhile, Feta is playing the midsole position, going to be playing the Tide Hunter. Feta on the Tide Hunter midsole. Really interesting. Meanwhile, Dota 3 is playing the Rubik. I'm guessing that's RMN. That is RMN. Uh, Black is going to be playing the Farming Sven, and Paz is playing the Bounty Hunter. So, on the other side, Dyer going to go for a full-on gank, as Hannah Montana is going to be playing the Dark Seer. It looks like Tiva is playing the Visage. Defect is playing the Jakiro. Sleasel is playing the Gyrocopter. And Exiled Dota is playing the Lone Druid. But yeah, interesting lanes. Rubik, Sven, they can apply a bit more pressure to the Gyrocopter. Telekinesis, uh, the, or... They can apply a bit more pressure to the Darks here, but looks like uh, the Dyer are going to take a page out of Clan Payne's book. They're going to do an offensive try and up against Sven. The battle begins. And yeah, both teams exchanging pleasantries. They know, the rate know that the ward has been placed, scouting out the positioning of RMN at all times. Immediate D ward being placed by RMN. Nicely recognized, going to say, all right, you can't see us. Got my hand in front of your face, you can't see me, son. Meanwhile, Bounty Hunter just going to cut off the creep wave, pull it to his tower. Going to be a Lone Druid solo top, so this lane. Uh, offensive try lane, but other than that, bit more standard. We're going to see a Dark Seer solo mid. Don't see this very often. Dark Seer solo mid, pretty strong. You know, gets runes pretty easily with Surge. Ion Shell, of course, does ridiculous damage, no matter what lane it's in. And he doesn't really get pressured by Anchor Smash, because he doesn't use his melee attacks to last hit. He uses Ion Shell to last hit. So, pretty solid lane adjustment right now, as these lanes are pretty tricky, but, you know, this patch has been so very versatile that you can pretty much see anything and not be too surprised by it. And I think in this setup, it works very, very well. Get Lone Druid some pretty much free farm up against a Bounty Hunter, but there might be engaging on the top lane Enchantress, already picking up a creep, the Troll Warlord creep with an Illusion Rune. Has the potential to deal significant damage, but really, this lane should not win, theoretically. The rain, rain, lane should not win, unless they could... Unless the Dyer caught very, very out of position. But Black is just going to take this time to farm up. 5-0 and right now. Me all tied onto 4-2. and Enchantress just constantly staying very close to his her teammates. And going to pick up some experience as well. Farming up the jungle camps whenever she can. Bounty on the top lane probably won't die. But won't be able to provide too much pressure on the Lone Druid, as the Sentry Ward has been placed by the Lone Druid, seeing the approaching Bounty Hunter, so might just start hitting him right about now, and he is going to do that. So Paz is going to tr trade some hits. And... 
Hannah Montana continuously farming on the middle lane with that Dark Seer. Probably gonna go for the Soul Ring as soon as possible. We all Tidehunter just wants levels, get that level 6 ASAP, and then teleport to the bottom lane, get the Ravage off, and then try to really secure that bottom lane for his team. And I wouldn't be too surprised to see if Tidehunter picks up a TP scroll after picking up this bottle. Or I guess he'll pick it up once he hits that level 6 mark. Chantress picks up a double danger. Unfortunately, Darkseer has not been able to get his rune control fully going. And Darkseer, he picked up a bottle rather than going for a soul ring himself, wants to get rune control, but Enchantress being a jungler has a lot easier time accessing those runes. Meanwhile, Black 10 0 in terms of CS, Gyrocopter 10 0 as well, but Jakiro's gonna circle around. Will they get the kill going? Gyrocopter. Only level 2 at this point, has point, 1 point to homing missile, 1 point to rocket barrage, rocket barrage, incredible damage if all the rockets hit the main hero. But when Enchantress is in the picture, she's constantly going to have an army of creeps going to soak up a lot of that damage, and she's not going to care too much, as that Observer Ward did spot out the retreating skeletons. Meanwhile, Bounty Hunter has hit level 4, Lone Druid is hit level 4 as well, keeping the Bounty Hunter back, Bounty Hunter not having too easy of a time, but keeping up in terms of farm, nicely done by Pass. And again, what's going to happen when all these heroes, Bounty Hunter and Tide Hunter at level 6, that's going to be the real question. As the South is being transferred to the Tide Hunter, going to pick up Boots and a Teleport Skull, I imagine, very, very soon. But Darks are doing huge amounts of damage. Here comes a gush on Hannah Montana. Hannah Montana just going to back off, play it a bit safe. Does not want to go too aggressively under the tower, even though, you know, Darks are pretty high armor, pretty high HP uh, for an intelligence hero. Does not care too much about that. You know, Armin trying to desperately pick up whatever experience he can, but Rubik, he knows his life is to support. He knows he's not going to get too much experience anyway. What matters is, is Black farming, and Black is farming relatively well. And he managed to kill that catapult, giving him a nice bounty. Going to probably be able to pick up the magic wand and boots whenever he can. Armin trying to soak up as much experience, and Visage in the trial line not really doing any work at this point in the game. Looks like Darkseer is going to pick up the Invisibility Rune. Uh, didn't even bottle it. Wow. So now he's not going to have any... He only has enough mana for one Ion Child. That might have been a pretty big mistake by the Darkseer. Might just cost him pretty heavily in this game. Hannah Montana, better player than that. Might have just made a small mental mistake. That happens to even the best of us. It happens to me more often than I can count. But yeah, Hannah Montana, not going to have any mana. Going to have to use the Courier just to transfer that bottle. But he's going to be in... Out of the lane for a decent amount of time. And looks like this is time for the rain to strike as the uh, Grave Chill goes on the span. Gonna hold him in place for a bit. Ice Path gonna fly in. Fable coming in. Here comes the Enchantress. The Shockwave from the Seder Hellcar. And one more hit. Black cleans out the kill. Does he have enough man to cast any more Stone Bolts? He's trying to go back in for Tibba. But Tibba does teleport out safely. So the offensive trial. Visage is not working out. Visage, a very aggressive trial line hero. His nuke does so much damage in the trial line. But, unfortunately, right now, that strategy is not working out. And Sven, 1,600 gold in the bank. Black always finds a way to get his farm even up against a trine, with only an Enchantress and a Rubik to back him up. And Tidehunter has hit level 6, and he does have a Teleport Scroll. Meanwhile, Bounty Hunter should have a TP as well. Does not yet have a TP, but I expect when Tidehunter teleports in with that Ravage, Bounty Hunter will be there to get maybe one or two track kills off of that. And now the Dire are going to have to play very, very passively, which is not something you want to do with the Visage, as the missile is going to be easily destroyed by the Rubik. Going to give him some nice gold as well. You know, 30 gold. Nothing right at home about, but take the little victories as Tyranter going to guess the rune top, because Enchantress is already going to be there to check bottom. And Tyranter is rewarded by his guess. Meanwhile, you know, Jakiro, level 3, put 2 points of door breath. That 0.4 second stun duration. Not significant enough, they want a little bit more burst damage on the fact on the back of that dual breath. Meanwhile, Sven continuing his farms. Gonna go for the treads, probably into one into BKB, I must imagine. Anything on the side of the dire that goes for BKB, just the entangle goes for BKB. And I think the filmmaker stunts do go through BKB, if I'm not mistaken. But Feta, the Tide Hunter, just having a field that Anchor Smashing has to teleport in. But it looks like there's going to be a Grave Chill on Sven. They're going to lift up the Shakiro into the air. Fable coming in to clean up the kill. And this is not what you want to have happen if you're an AON fan, if you're a Hannah Montana fan. Because this 
I mean, Visage in a challenge is expected to win 9 out of 10 times because of the amount of damage he does through his nukes, but unfortunately, the disables and the damage on the side of Radiant are just too much. That enchanter is really making a big, big difference. Lonjir is going to have to put in a lot of work and get that relic farmed up as fast as possible, but I expect the Zero to address that situation relatively soon by sending somebody top. The Rubik made the Enchantress to apply a bit of pressure. Londrid just picked up the Trangle Boots and now might be starting saving up for his Relic. So uh, we'll see how the Rain decide to respond to this situation. Meanwhile, Feta just continue his farm. He could teleport in and get the Ravage, but not too much HP as Ice Path trying to steal some creeps whenever possible. Me on pass. Uh, getting his tower a bit pressured, but Londrin does not do nearly enough damage by himself at this point to take a tower by himself. But, you know, every bit of damage does help for the mid stages of the game. And we see the migration by Kuroki Fish, the uh, intelligence dreads. Can she get off the enchant? She does. Gonna cast the impetus as well. Trying to go to work on pace, but that sentry ward wears off. At the worst possible moment, and Lone Druid does take the fall. And even without Sentry Ward did not wear off, it still wouldn't have been enough. Can Black survive? Black does die to the Visage. Rubik gonna be the next one to fall. Gyrocopter with his damage does so much. Fable, nice juke back by RMN. Does he have enough to escape? Trying to go in, but Ice Path does get this done. Looks like Feta does pick up the kill. He still has Ravage. Did get the gush off onto the Jakiro. Might go back in. Meanwhile, Kuroki picks up a kill on the Darkseer. Darkseer trying to pick up a kill on the Bounty Hunter, but unable to do so. So overall, Sven and Rubik for and Lonjir and Darkseer, I think that favored the Rain. And considering that Feta did not even use Ravage, that's another factor that Aon has to worry about. But Lonjir doing a smart choice. Knowing that the rain heroes have to back off immediately pressing tower, he's gonna get this tower for sure. No teleports will be there to defend it. Can he get the last hit? That's a real question, and he does. Top tower has fallen. You know, Feta has abandoned the mid lane altogether, but the die wards being placed scope him out, but that means Black is just gonna farm up happily. Black and creeps farm up happily ever after. As there's going to be a teleport bottom. Visage is in position. Jakiro's in position. Unfortunately, they are not too highly leveled. They do have a level 3 soul assumption, which does pretty strong damage. But Feta going to roam back towards the mid lane. Hannah Montana trying to get his farm going. Uh, has now surpassed the Lone in terms of farm. Lone just going to play a bit more safe as he's starting to save for his relic, knowing he's a bit more exposed. Uh, and a lot more danger of smoke ganks. So he's just going to farm his jungle, try to pick up his relic whenever possible. And Aon making a nice recovery. Trying to seal the game, playing very, very passively, knowing that the Ravage could come in at any time. As there's going to be Scammer and Bolt trying to go for the Gyrocopter. Here comes a great shot on Sven yet again. That moon speed really being reduced. And there's going to be a lot of damage being dumped on RMN. One more soul assumption. The Rocket Flare is going to fly in. Going to finish off RMN. And meanwhile, Black is going to take so much damage. He is going to take the fall. As Black did manage to kill the Gyrocopter. Nicely done by Black. But still, a nice victory for Aon. As they picked up a double kill. Keeping Black down. Keeping RMN down. Our man is level 6, so he does have that spell steal to get a spell stolen. And really throw a monkey wrench in the side of Aeolin. But the real question is the Trilion Offensive Power coming in a little bit too late as Feta, level 9, gonna be enough to scare the Gyrocopter back by himself pretty much. Those skeletons gonna work. Those skeletons do pretty decent damage, and more importantly, they take up a tower hit. Take up two tower hits each. And that's going to force the migration of the Dire Squad towards, and that means Black is going to farm. And never want to give Black any openings to farm up. He will last hit every single creep he can possibly get his hands on. Meanwhile, they know they have Ravage. They can charge in very bravely. Can they get the Ravage off? Tidehunter! 
Gonna get stunned by the bird. It's gonna hold on to his Ravage. Nice canceling, but he's gonna go after the Gyrocopter. Gonna take a bunch of damage from the Rocket Barrage, but Gyrocopter should take the fall. Tyranter took way too much damage from the Rocket Barrage, but Kuroki does pick up the kill. Gonna pop the Ravage right about now. Here comes Bounty Hunter. So much damage being output. But Tyranter did take the fall two for two with the Ravage, but Bounty Hunter is here to clean up the kills. And the birds are falling to the Enchantress. The familiars that are. That is. Meanwhile, Lone Druid playing so smart, going back in, going to try to clean this tier 2 tower up on the bottom lane. In terms of positioning, this isn't really too important, but still gives Lone Druid a nice bounty of gold, and that's going to force the defense by the rain, so they can't even get the tier 1 mid. So even though the rain won that team fight, they couldn't make too much come from it. But that is going to give Feta a little bit more time to have that Ravage cooldown. Uh, we'll see if he goes for straight Blink Dagger. Maybe he'll go for something tanky, go for a straight pipe. And then go for Blink Dagger. Meanwhile, early gold graph does favor the Radiant, but still way too early to tell. Experience graph does heavily favor the Radiant. And considering you have a Vice at Shrine, that's definitely not what you want to have happen if you're a Dire fan. And Lone Druid going to get a little bit of damage taken to him. RMN does have the Telekinesis, unfortunately, a little bit too slow. Lone Druid able to motor on out of there with those Tranquil Boots. Beta just going to provide a bit of pressure. Can they get the defense going? Meal and Chad just did get the middle tower. And looks like a timing by Zero going to come in. Knowing that maybe uh, Dire teleports are on cooldown. We'll see if they have any teleports. Jakiro doesn't. Visage does, but Visage by himself will not be enough to help out the top lane. Laundry going to escape right back in there. There's going to be a teleport in by the Dark Seer. Feta going to get entangled. Looks like the Surge was stolen by RMN. Can it be enough to save Feta? He should just use on Feta. Anchor Smash being used once again in Kuroki. Dominating with this Enchantress. Call down being used, but call down. Not the greatest ultimate in the game. Here comes the Soul. RMN going to take a bunch of damage. He is going to take the fall. Kuroki going to go in for the Gyrocopter. Bounty Hunter is there, but the Wall of Replica by Hannah Montana. Nicely done by Hannah. As he picks up a triple kill, he's going to love that for now. But unfortunately, they did lose a lone druid. And Ravage was not up, and now Black is going to town. Not too sure of that favorite. Obviously, the Dire managed to get a kill advantage, but they lost their lone druid who's fighting for the relic. And Ravage was not up in that team fight. And now it is up. It's going to be level 11. It's going to do more damage. And it's going to stun for a greater duration. But Feta might just take the fall right here. Dual Breath going to fly, and Feta is going to die. As he's going to use the Ravage... So defensively, diff he just didn't want to die. Not sure how I feel about that usage of Ravage, especially since he picked up the Blink Dagger right about now. But he didn't want to die. He knew he had the Blink Dagger gold right then and there. So I guess it was a judgment call, and Feta made it. Black picked up a tower. Going to go for that straight BKB rush. Again, the only thing that goes to BKB is the Lone Druid Entangle, and I think the bird stuns. The familiar stuns. Me on Lone Druid, just completely foregoing the relic, knowing that he's just going to be pressured too hard if he goes for the relic. Going to go instead for the Maelstrom into Mjolnir, hope for more entangles, try to hold that spend in place. But the key hero in this game has been Bounty Hunter. Going to go for the Vlad's build yet again. He's been able to get some nice track gold kills off on them. And meanwhile, the Dire know that Ravage is down. They're going to try to get the push going. Will there be a defense mustered up by the Radiant? There's going to be a Teleport in at the very least. But they don't have Ravage. They have Sven, Stun, Stormbolt, and a Mithril Hammer up. They're going to try to bottle Treads. Try to get the maximum man he can possibly get. Going to be a Blink and Gush on the Gyrocopter. And Warcry being used by Sven. And that's it. That's all it takes to defend the tower, apparently. And Balinar must be just looking at that bear, saying... He's going to be alright. But still, you can put that Iron Shell on the bear. And that has acts like a pseudo-radiance. Meanwhile, all the radiance sense where the Dire are. Shakiro, level 8. As we can just check out the levels, you can see Radiant have a significant level advantage. Uh, the three Radiant heroes have, or the three Dire heroes, are suffering so much. Considering it was an offensive tryhard, it really could not get too much accomplished. Visage does scale better than he used to in the late game because of the increased damage on the birds. And because, you know, soul assumption, of, because of its 4 second cooldown, always be a very, very strong factor in teamfights. 
Mihal Kuroki going for that Aghanim rush. Only about 650 gold away from finishing that. Wants to go on the top lane as Bounty Hunter tries to get himself in position. Kuroki does reveal himself to the creeps. Bounty Hunter is going to have to go it alone. Just gets the track off on the bear, revealing the positioning of that lone Druid at all times. Keeping him back, keeping him scared. Lone Druid's going to have that Maelstrom finish at the very least. You know, Vlad's is picked up on the side of the bounty area. Now he can start going for items like BKB and start picking up some damage. Hannah Montana, will he go on the pursuit for Rubik? No, just clearing off some creeps. Hannah has finished the mechanism. We'll see if he goes back into a pipe. Really too early to tell at this stage. But if he does get pipe, I mean the pure damage, he probably won't get pipe. There's just so many sources of damage that are non-magical in this game that's not even funny. Bottom tower is under attack. Meanwhile, this bottom tier one tower will take the fall, but they're going to trade it for a top tier one. Bottom tower has Theta fallen. does have the blink, so I think the rain can get the team fight going if they really want to. But the question is, if they want to, they are content to farm up. Sven does have his BKB, so I think now would be a good time to go for a team fight if you are team zero. As Sven's going to come in, teleport in. Lone Druid's gonna get locked in place, God Strength being used, Enchantress gonna slow down the Lone Druid. No creeps, but oh, just managed to get away in the nick of time. But at least gonna take the bear, 100 gold for him. Gonna be very, very nice. And another tower trade. Liquid Fire gonna provide a bit more damage towards that tower and slow down its attack speed. But I think it'll be a pretty even speed on how fast both these teams take the tower. Veda is actually going to teleport back. It does have the Blink Dagger, and that means a Blink and Gush immediate pick off by Kuroki, the Enchantress. And now the Grave Shield is going to go on. Ravage going to be used. Does catch two heroes. Nicely done by Veda. Gets it on just the tip, and Kuroki gets a double kill. And now the Dire are in complete disarray. Those impetus hits are just completely owning those familiars. Man, Enchantress is such a solid counter pick. I wonder if Kuroki knew impetus went through that familiar 95% magic reduction shield. Probably knew. But now it's safe to say the rain have a significant advantage. You can see the goal graph creeping up to 10k, experience graph creeping up to 10k as well. Sven has most farm in the game. And Lone Druid, since he went for that Maelstrom rather than the Radiance, really going to have to get a lot more done in order to sort of carry his team to victory. But what they are banking on is that they can get a lot of things done while the Ravage is down. Ravage will be down for another 90 seconds. But Feta farming very, very well has another... Huge amount of gold in the bank. Bounty Hunter trying to catch off this gyrocopter unawares, but RMN not in position. Dire do match clean the middle tier 1 tower. And they know Ravage is down for another 80 or so seconds. So they're going to keep pushing in, but that Aghanim Scepter vacuum does just barely lift. Man, if that was the old vacuum, would have caught Kuroki, caught him out of position. That bear is going to get locked in place by Black. Ice Path going to fly in. Both teams dancing back and forth, but it looks like the Dire are going to be the first ones to play chicken. As Gush going to come in, Feta just charging in, not getting any sorts of crap. Does have a haste rune, and he's just going to fly in. Man, he really doesn't care. He's going to get stunned by the familiar. Meanwhile, Visage trying to get away. Can he escape? A couple more hits by the Impetus. Does pick up the kill without the Shuriken toss. Meanwhile, Armand is going to take a huge amount of damage. Another nice wall by Hannah Montana. But the vacuum stolen by Rubik in conjunction with that Stormbolt locked everybody in place for a huge amount of time. And Chetris does take the fall. There goes a huge portion of the Reign's DPS. And looks like the Dire are going to successfully drive off the Reign. I think two for one in favor of the Reign. Black going to go back in. Trying to kill the Lone Druid. Looks like Armand does lift the Lone Druid back into place. Hannah Montana complete out of mana. Going to get vacuumed in. RMN played so well during that team fight. But of course Black will get all the glory. Picks up a triple kill. I wonder how many track kills they got from that. I guess we'll find out very, very shortly on the gold graph. Fable gonna fly in. And keep in mind, again, Rain were fighting without Ravage. I thought that vacuum wall evolution was really strong, but Armin's quick reflexes stole the vacuum. And that vacuum was instrumental in securing Radiant that team fight and securing them a heavy advantage in this game.
As we can take a look at the gold graph, you can see a huge upward swing for the Radiant. Probably got a decent amount of track kills, and the fact that they're winning 18 and 9 must be discouraging for the die. What's even more discouraging is that a lot of these times Radiants are fighting without Ravage. And now Ravage is up, the Dire can't even push very aggressively because they always have to be in fear of that Tide to Blink Dagger Ravage. Meanwhile, Bounty Hunter is 3k gold in the bank. Black managed to pick up a hefty number of kills, has the Mask of Madness, still has 9 seconds left on his BKB. So he can definitely go to town during that time. And sure, they killed a significant portion of DPS in the form of Kuroki. But, you know, in the end of the day, it is an Enchantress. Gush gonna fly in for the Gyrocopter. Pass gonna get one hit. Track sure can toss. Are they gonna use a Ravage just for the Gyrocopter? That is the question. Feta, he might just take the fall. No, he's just way too tank. Visage gonna die in a couple hits of the Impetus. The Ice Path barely lifts that increased 700 range given to Enchantress by the Aghanim Sept. So strong. Hannah Montana gonna surge away, but here comes Kuroki the Enchantress. Sprunking all up in your business, really not too much. And Dyer's Curry even gets killed to add insult to injury. The familiar is gonna die as well, Kuroki, killing them with a vengeance. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Meanwhile, Black is just like, all right, I'll kill this tower. I don't care. And I think the rain could even push in to try to take the racks. They still have Ravage. Meanwhile, how far? Oh, a couple teleports in. Bears knows he's dead, trying to get the last hit at the very least. He does get the last hit. Trying to bait out the shuriken toss, but not good enough. Stormbolt gonna fly in. The lone druid is gonna take the fall. At least he got a tower. That's what he's saying. Try and justify it. Meanwhile, Kuroki, he just solo killed a gyrocopter. With a mask of madness. Mask of madness and Chad just even met everybody. Here comes the enchant! Mask of Madness cooling down very rapidly! Oh, he's gonna get the Mask of Madness off! Doesn't even need it. Saying, oh, he's gonna get that Mask of Madness move speed enchantress! <laughs> Sproinking all over the place does kill the Jakira. That Mask of Madness is totally necessary. Man, best item in the game by far. And Kuroki is just trolling. Probably not trolling. You know, Mask of Madness enchantress. Pretty strong. Gets that more impetuses in, and the more impetuses you get out of, uh, now, now he's trolling. He picks up a Hyperstone as well. Meanwhile, <laughs> Feta gonna have the Shivas or the Hex. Desolator finished on the Bounty Hunter. Chrysalis finished on the Sven. And, again, for the 80th time, Ravage has not been used. Look at this machine gun enchantress! So ridiculous! Oh man! Tyranter did manage to pick up a kill with that blink garage, but that machine gun enchantress might have just been the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. And good manners by both teams. GG, good luck tomorrow is the call by Aeolan. As Black, once again, gonna carry his team with a lot of help from all star players on his side towards the semifinals, can they get back to the finals and win the qualifier to get to the LAN to compete for around $20,000 in US. As Feyna gonna suicide saying, life's too short to die. And apparently is, cause he didn't die. Black Dota, best Dota. Machine Gun Enchantress, best Enchantress. Man, this fountain is weak sauce. Like, this is the worst fountain I've ever seen in my life. Under attack. Come on, sprites. <laughs> <laughs> Wall replica Ember. But yeah. Team Zero are gonna move on to the semifinals of the Frag by Thor Open. And they're gonna play tomorrow in a best of three. So just waiting. Waiting for this game to end. As is the case in most black games, we're gonna check out his gold per minute. 600, casual 600. You can put Charlins against black, he still manages to get over 500 gold per minute. But Kuroki's machine gun enchantress definitely stole the show in that game.
Laundry gonna disconnect as uh, we're just waiting on the last couple of people to drop out. But yeah, he can run offense at Charlie's against Black, but apparently not enough as the individual player player skill of mid lane and top lane enough to keep under attack. Uh, zero in the game, and considering that the Trilon didn't even win against Black, definitely, definitely her AON. But yeah, as the last person has disconnected on the side of AON, my name is Vivon. You can follow me on YouTube, youtube.com slash 773 Follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash 773 I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed and followed there. It would help me out greatly. But that's going to end of this quarterfinals match between Zero and AON. Zero making pretty simple work over their points thus far, but their road is going to get a lot harder as the game goes on. So thank you for watching. I'll try to bring you the next game as soon as possible, and I'll see you soon.